Hey, welcome to another Carepia cast, not cast analysis. Today he's playing against the Protoss. This is currently diamond level. <coughs> let's uh, let's find out uh, what he's fucking up today. What are you doing? So far, things are fine. So far, things are fine. You even have your close patches stacked. I am impressed. Good job. Nicely timed natural as well. Good stuff. So far your build looks fine. I like that you hit 16. Good shit. Sorry, I'm eating a yogurt really fast. I'm really hungry. Putting in overtime today. I'm a hungry guys. I'm a hungry man. Okay, so far your build's fine. It's all great. It's all hunky dory. This is the first thing you're doing that I don't like. So far, you've done everything fine. Now, let me tell you what I don't like. I don't like that you're making an overlord right now. And the reason why is because you don't need to. You can make drones. The reason why you can make drones is because if you're going to get cannon rushed, you would have been cannon rushed already. Nobody's going to cannon rush you at like two minutes, right? That's just impossible. Because by then, as they start the pylon, you could just make lings and kill it. Like, it's not realistic. Shit. It's not practical. So, with that being said, if you know you're not going to get cannon rush at two minutes, or like at 145-ish, when you started your overlord, like 140, if you just make drones... You still will not supply block on your base. Your main and natural will not supply block, even though you start two queens as well. Because when your hatchery at your natural finishes, you'll have 28 total supply available. Your pool and your hatchery will finish around the same time. Okay. And between now and when the hatchery finishes, you'll spawn one more larva on top of the larva you just had right now. Like one more larva will come out. So even if this was a drone, you'd be at 20 out of 22, and then another one would spawn, you'd be at 21 out of 22. And then this will finish, and then you'll go up to 25 out of 28, because you get 6 additional to the max, and you make 2 queens, which is 4 supply. And then you can make an overlord. All it does is it gives you exactly the same situation you'll be in either way, where this overlord will get made. It's just that you don't make it as a priority over drones, that could be mining minerals right as the hatchery's done. So, and there's nothing punishing you. There's, nothing's going to attack you right now. You don't need to, like, not do it. So, that's a little tip to give you a bit of an edge against Protoss. Every Zerg can do it, by the way. It gets all Protosses. It's If they don't cannon rush you, and you don't need to, like, save Larva for Lings, why make the drone after the Overlord? Why not make drones before? Because you're not going to block anyways. Okay, so this guy's got two pylon, two gateway in the in the natural area. Interesting. There's another pylon there. You took your third. Okay, I don't like. I don't like that you. Uh, I do not like that you double injected your hatcheries. There's only one time. There's only one time, realistically. That you should ever double inject your hatcheries. And that is 
if the Protoss is going to be doing something really greedy. Okay. Like if the Protoss was going for Nexus first and the core was super late. I'd be like, yeah, double eject it, that, that shit. Go for it. That's fine. But this guy has double fucking gateway. And a core. Before the Nexus was even done. This is actually more aggressive than normal. Like this is like a standard, it could be like a standard gate, Nexus core type situation going on. But then he makes second gate, like as he makes the core or some shit. Like this fucking double gateway is really early. And if you go back a little bit, it really watch the Overlord with the timers and shit. And you, you can see exactly that, right? Second gateway is not done yet. Core is already done, which guarantees his build was gateway, Nexus, core, gateway. <coughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing now, though. This guy's either doing this because he's paranoid and he doesn't really understand Zerg timers, or he could attack you with like really fast double adepts. And if you don't fucking spread your creep and you get attacked by adepts, you're going to lose a lot of drones. So spread your fucking creep and spread it in the direction towards where your third is so you can actually properly defend your third base. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. What rank is this game? It's Diamond League. Diamond. And there you go. There's an adept attacking you, right? Already. Attacking that pylon was a waste of time. That creep tumor is never going to be alive. The fact that you made it... You knew his adept was there because your lings were attacking the pylon. And then you just make a tumor in his fucking face. This is never going to work because the creep tumor also takes bonus damage from an adept. It dies super fucking fast. It takes 22 damage per hit from an adept. It's, li it's light. Creep tumors are light. So... It's never going to build in time. It's going to die. And you just wasted 25 energy. Like, that was YOLO. And that was terrible by him to do that. But... Yeah. And now you have... Not only did you eject first, so you delayed your creep. But you also did your creep denied. So it delayed your creep again. So your creep should already be, like, here. Like, passing the gas right now. Like, basically as the third finishes, it's already connected in creep. And your creep is still not even left in natural yet. So, if he does more adept attacks, your third is so vulnerable. Like this. Okay, this guy does not know how to use phase. Okay, so what the fuck are the spores doing? Carepeora. You. Hold on. Okay, so we're scouting a <coughs> robo facility, a twilight council, and a forge, right? These, all three of these buildings are let's get, get rid of the production tab as well so we can actually look at what you're like no cheating we look at your perspectives and shit make sure because i mean i'm doing it from a zerg mindset what you should be doing with the vision you give yourself i'm not actually looking at the production tab but we'll close it just so no one looks at it uh so you've seen council forge robo all together all right at the same time okay I want you to know that you have to pick and choose your tech pads. You can't do everything. This is the equivalent of you going for a lair, a spire, a infestation pit, and a hydrogen. Okay? If, like, you think that he could do all tech pads. You fucking can't. You really can't. You can't do everything at once. It's not possible. Uh, so, know that. That's important, right? So he's chosen Robo Council. And now what does Robo Council mean to you? Does it mean anything to anybody? If someone goes for a Robo Council, that probably means that that Robo is going to be used for something like an Observer and something like a Warp Prism. It's probably not going to be used for a fuckload of Immortals 
as a starting unit. Okay? Not saying that it can't be. It totally still can be. But if it is going to be used for mortals, my question would be, why is the council so prioritized? Like, why do we have to make a council so fast? Now, if we're going to, if we're going to get a council, what is that going to be used for? That's going to probably be used for blink stalkers, resonating glaive adepts, or charge lots. Sure, that, that's very realistic that it could be any, any one of those. But if we're pairing a council with a robo, now that's going to make this either be a really aggressive form of one of those things, because you can have an aggressive warp prism paired with it, or it could be for it could be for Dark Templar. Okay, it could be. So we'll go forward now, and let's see when you build spores. Okay. So he's attacking you. And this is annoying, right? You're like, ah, fucking Jesus! It makes our legs. And then you start spores right like now, right? You start spores right now. And his council just finished. Now I don't like this at all. And here's why I don't like this at all. Because you got to understand what, how long it takes to build a structure. Spore crawler has a much faster build time than a dark shrine. Okay. So a dark shrine is 71 seconds. Remember that. 71 seconds. A spore crawler is 21 seconds. That's 50 fucking seconds difference in the duration of how long it takes to build these buildings. Not only that, the second the the Dark Shrine would be done, if that's what you were afraid of right now, doesn't mean that the second the Dark Shrine's done, DTs are walking in your mineral line already. He'd have to make them somewhere. Like, the, the fastest way you could do it is fly a prism across the map and have, like, a prism, like, right here. And then make, like, four DTs out of the prism. So, making four DTs would still take you four seconds to warp it in. And then walking from here to here would be another, like, four seconds. So, you have, like, realistically, 50 oh, seconds plus yeah. eight on building and walking. So, you have, like, 58 fucking seconds. Basically, a minute. Until you really need to worry about detection. So if you really think about it like that, you can you can see this finish and think to yourself, "All right. Well, I can now if I, if I if if he physically isn't going to be in my base for about like okay. If he if he isn't going to have a dark shrine for 70 seconds and then it's going to take 71 specifically, and then it's going to take about eight seconds or so to for him to like warp it in and walk into my mineral oh, line from the edge of my base. Yeah. That's 80 seconds, okay? That's 80 seconds total of time from now to when the Dark Shrine would have be a problem for you. So you could literally go, okay, well, if my spore is 20 and he needs 80, I could take the difference there. 80 minus 20 is 60. Okay, so in 60 seconds, I'll start spores. So you could go, okay, like 4.15 or, uh, or like 4.12 his council finished, so at 5.12, I'll start Spore. One minute later. And you'll still have it in time. And if you actually are going to be able to somehow have a layer in time, you don't even need a Spore. You can just have a fucking Overseer. So, way too early on Spores. These Spores are going to do nothing other than slow your economy down. You have to understand timers in the game. So, what we just talked about there is something to remember. Okay. And another thing too to look at, here, check this out. Watch, watch the council. Now the council's a harder building to do this with, I'm not gonna lie. But watch the council, watch the council. Watch it. I want you to stare at that council right now, just fucking stare at it. And I want you to tell me if you notice how fast the lights on the council are moving up the tower. <coughs> watch how fast they move. But now, did you notice a difference right there? Did you notice a difference? Because, like, right now, again, wa watch it. Just watch the lights. Watch the lights. Ding, ding. 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 It's so much faster. When the lights go... Like, the... the it's a very subtle, like, the thing moves out a little bit, and then the lights go really fucking fast. That's really hard to catch if you don't catch it while it happens. But if you just memorize, 
each console, when it's not being upgraded, the lights on it should go one, two, one, two. Like it's almost like a full second for like from bottom to top, bottom to top, bottom to top. And as soon as it activates and upgrades something, it's like every fucking one third of a second. Boop, 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 it goes so much fucking faster. It's way fucking faster. So it's glaives, right? It doesn't have to be glaives. It could be charge. It could be blink. It could be glaives. It could be anything. But you know what this tells you? It's not fucking DTs. Nobody goes DTs and gets upgrades because they can't afford it. So here's the next thing you should be doing. This is the next thing you should be doing. Carepiora. Fly this overlord there. Fly up to the guests. This guy hasn't even killed your overlord yet. This guy's fucking crazy. He's letting you scout everything. Fly up to the gas because you know what that tells you? It tells you what the build is. If this guy's getting an upgrade and he does not have gas, he physically can't afford a bunch of blink stalkers. So it's probably not going to be stalkers. If he doesn't have the gas, it's most likely going to be either some adepts or a lot of charge lots. Now, if he does have the gas, it could be blink stalkers. It's probably not going to be zealots it's probably not going to be adepts unless it's also going to be paired with something else then you also have to worry about the fact that it could be dts because he can easily go charge dts adepts dts or straight up he might be fucking with you and he might just cancel the upgrade as you leave and make dts or it could just be blink stalkers <clears throat> thank you doug for the bits I had to leave a chicken man SC's stream because he was screaming so loud my wife came in the room and asked me what was that annoying sound. What? Why is he screaming? What's he doing? Thank you for the bits, Doug. Much love, man. Uh, but yeah. the Like this right here tells you a lot of what is probably happening here. Things that would make sense. And you can also scout the front door with your links. I think we talked about this before, didn't we? You're making fucking spine... Sp okay. I don't like it at all, dude. This is a big misread. Also, you built it next to each other, so they fuck up your mineral line, too. This is really bad. Could it be? <coughs> no. No! But hopefully now, hopefully now, uh, you understand. <laughs> okay, so another sign, another sign is that he doesn't have a third base. You just scouted that for a brief second. And this guy has adepts at the third, stalkers in the main. This guy's all over the fucking place. For lack of a better word, this Protoss is doing a terrible build. Uh, this is like, I want to smack my forehead with my hand right now. What the fuck is prompting you to go attack right now? <laughs> Get it, bay. I love you, man. But hear me out. Hear me out for a second. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of right now? When you, because you're making spine spore. Detection and spine crawler. Your thought process probably means you're afraid of Dark Templars here, I would imagine. Because if you're going to say anything besides Dark Templar, why the fuck are you building spores? <laughs> now, if you're afraid of Dark Templar and you walk across the map without detection, what are you going to get accomplished if there are Dark Templars waiting for you there? You're just going to lose units and they're going to die because you have no detection because you don't even have a layer yet to make an Overseer with. This is a horrible fucking attack. This attack makes absolutely no sense. If there were DTs on the game right now, all you would have accomplished is one Dark Templar could kill this entire army. Just one. And, like, the rest of them could come over here and kill the fucking Static D that is now defenseless. And then your base dies. 
Like, what would you do if this guy warped in like four DTs here and warped in one DT there? And he just slowly kills your army. And you kill a couple gateways and some shit. But you ki he kills your entire fucking army with his one DT. And he kills your whole main base with four DTs in here. And now it's a two base versus two base situation. And then he, uh, and then your army dies. So now he warps in another round of DTs and he starts killing your natural with your new units. Not, not good decision making here by you. <clears throat> this doesn't actually do. This is not a good time to go attack. Behind this, you're making drones. I like that a lot. This guy isn't even using his fucking units. Uh, yeah, you should not be throwing your entire army away, though, on this Nexus, either. This is one of those... I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. This is one of those moments where... If your Protoss opponent wasn't... Uh, shit for brains... Sorry, Koopa Troopa. If you're someone who watches the stream, I don't mean it. But, uh... <laughs> this guy... What the fuck is this guy's build? Okay? This build is actually... No. It's it's just a big no. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. And the only reason why what you did even somewhat... You could, uh, you could say somewhat worked is because this guy's build is literally all over the place. It's a fucking mess of a build. But you're, logically, you should not have moved out. If you thought it was DTs, so I try to help you understand why you, how you could know if it is or isn't DTs if you just pay attention to time of the game and also investment and also upgrade. These are things that tell you the answer. But you moving out is just opening your base up to being countered by DTs. So terrible time to move out. But now. We'll drop all of so what I just explained to you, we're gonna we're gonna say it like this. What I just explained to you is logic, okay? I just I just explained logical developments in your normal higher level PVZ. And now we're gonna take that logic and we're gonna ball it up and we're gonna throw it out the window because it no longer matters, because we're now at a new stage of the game and what's happened has now happened, and now we can talk about the game that you're in now. Even though you should be dead for what you did. If you if you actually reacted properly like this and did what you did, you should die for that. And I already told you why. But now we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the game as to what it is from here on out, okay? It's just that I don't want you to think that, oh yeah, this is going great for you. This is actually, you took some fucking huge, ridiculous risks that you should not have taken for no reason. Like, there's no reason why you should have done that. So I didn't, I was not a fan of it at all. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Now, let's talk about what you're doing here. Let's talk about what you should be doing from now on. So you just denied his third, and you're coming back home after you lost your entire army, and you made drones behind this, and you fully saturated, for the most part, three bases. I would say you need to, number one, get an overseer into his base. Number two, start a hydralisk den. And number three, stop making fucking zerglings. And start making roaches. You could. I would also allow a spire instead of a hydrogen. <coughs> Either tech would be good. And the reason why is because Hydra would be good <coughs> at just dealing with a nice random assorted amount of gateway shit. Like behind your roaches. And you could also switch it into lurkers eventually too. That'd be fine. A spire would be good as well. Because if this guy doesn't have uh, Stargate... And he doesn't have the ability to go Phoenix. It's really easy to run around his base and uh, kill probes. And then you starve him out and you put him into a really weird spot. And you can eventually just kill him. They both would work. Stop making lings though. If you keep making lings, I fucking hate it. You're making drones. Okay, that's scary. You better stop droning right now. You're, at, you're in the position of over droning. Think about it like this. Remember how we talked about drone windows? Do you remember how we talked about drone windows? 
The fact that he was trying to take a third and you made drones as a response to that is a drone window. That's fine. But you literally just droned all the way up to three fully saturated bases. And if we were to go back on the clock and look at when you arrived at his base, it wasn't at 708. It wasn't at 707. It was probably at like six fucking minutes. It was over a minute ago. Okay. So you've been making drones for over a minute. And you also threw away your entire army aside from one roach. So, this is scary as shit for you if this guy decides to counterattack you. So, I hope you stop making drones now and you start making units. You're making roaches. This is good. You should be making roaches and you should be scouting his base. You should be... Because here's... Here, why should I scout his base? What the fuck is... What's the point of that? What the hell? What the fuck is he going to make? Do you know exactly what units he's going to make? Do you know if he's going to go specifically into charge lots? Do you know if he's going to go blink stalkers? Do you know if he's going to go into glaive adepts? Because from what he showed you, he had like all of them. He had zealots, stalkers, and uh, adepts all defending the third with an immortal. This guy is literally all over the place with his build. So you want to find out, is it going to be a Robo Bay follow-up? Is it going to be a Twilight Council follow-up? Or, sorry, a Templar Archives follow-up? Is it going to be a Dark Shrine follow-up? Is it going to switch into a Stargate? Like, what the fuck is this guy going to do? Is he going to go for Charge the Ark on Immortal? What is this going to be? So, scouting that would help you a lot. You're not scouting anything. So, you're playing a guessing game now. And if you're going to play a guessing game, I would actually say... You should be making roaches into hydras. Roaches into hydras would be probably the more versatile composition that would be utilizable. Like, you could utilize it versus lots of different kinds of comps from your opponent. Also, what is with the triple inject? What the fuck was that? Get one of those queens over here and inject that base instead. And spread creep with the other queens. Having nine, having like nine larvae queued up on this hatchery is... It doesn't really... It's not good. I don't. I'm not a fan. I, I don't understand what why you're having three queens inject here, when you still definitely desperately need creep spread in your main base and in the top of your, the map. Like this is completely naked, and you're triple injecting a hatchery. I don't like that at all. <laughs> okay, you're going for a bane nest. I don't like it at all. I hate it. I fucking despise your bane nest. Because if you go bane nest, again, what is your opponent doing? Scratch your head for a second. Be like, I have no fucking clue what he's doing. I'm not sure anymore. Like I attacked him earlier, th over three minutes ago. And he had a, a mortal. And a couple stalkers and some adepts and a zealot. Now I don't know because it's been three minutes. So I'm going to make a fucking bane nest on top of roaches and lings. If this guy decided to just switch into Stargate. Because he's, he's not even utilizing his aggressive council robo combo here. He hasn't even attacked you once yet. He hasn't attacked you once. So... You don't really know what he's overall doing. Like, we're, we're still in the dark pretty heavily, right? Also, I'm putting my legs up on my desk. Because I'm going into ultra casual fucking luxury mode here. Sorry, give me one second. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. This, feel, this feels fucking nice. Oh, god damn. I can stretch out. Hell yeah. So, yeah. We don't know what he's doing. Uh, We're not sure what he's doing yet. It's It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a sticky pickle here, okay? It's a sticky wicket. We, we're not really fully understanding what's going on. So, this is actually super fucking scary for you. Because if he shows up with any type of tech that can counter you, be it air or... Pause, 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 pause. If this guy... Let's just say... Let's just say... This guy went for... Uh, storm. 
hypothetically, let's say his composition in three and a half minutes since he last attacked, since he last was attacked by you, he attacked into Storm. How the hell would you handle Immortals plus an assortment of gateway units plus, like, let's say, like, four Templars or five Templars with Storm? Like, how would you engage that with Mass Ling, Ravager, Bane Ling? You would have a terrible time, I feel like. That's just one option. What if he had uh, Colossus? You don't really have anything that can, like, run down and kill Colossus very well. Either. What if he had uh, sentry, mass sentries? You'd get fucked again because you could get... Like, even though Ravagers can break force fields, he can reapply them and you can get zoned out pretty hard by force fields and get fucked over. So here's here's, an ex here's just one example, okay? One example. Let's say the Protoss was going for a lot of sentries. Let's say he made a lot of sentry. And you scouted that. And you saw he was going immortal sentry and, like, stalker with blink. Or, like, charge lot sentry, whatever. Just fucking sentry. Like, he's got, like, eight sentries. He's going to do a big-ass sentry push. What if you, as a response to that, if you went for a Baneling Nest, just like you did, decided to go for Overlord Speed, got, like, three Drop Lords, and filled up all three of them with four Banelings each, and as he does this big-ass push, you flank him on both sides, you make him force field the right side and the left side because he doesn't want to get run over by Ling Bane and a little bit of Ravager and you just fly into the middle of it and you just drop Banelings on his head. Or what if he was going fucking sentry push and you skip the Overlord idea altogether and you do the same exact thing I said with Ling Bane Ravager and you make him, you engage him on both sides, he force heals himself into a little donut and you cross of bile the center where his army is where he can't really move out of cross of bile anymore because he force heals himself into a little tight spot. Like... <laughs> you have no plan of attack because you have no scout at all. You have you have no idea what this is until he attacks you. And now you're like, I hope what I made works. I don't know. <coughs> and look, it's got sentry. It's not many. Now he's making more. See, that, this doesn't make any sense by Protoss. <sighs> this game makes me sad. Protoss players, here's a tip for you. Yeah, Protoss players, I'm going to give you a tip. Really fast. If you are going to attack a Zerg with a sentry based army with immortals, like what this guy is attempting to do right now, for the love of God, don't open council first. First of all, because you don't need a council for this attack. It just slows it down if you do that. Secondly, Make your sentries first. Before you make zealots and fucking... You don't need charge with this. Before you make fucking anything else, make sentries. Every time you have gas to make a sentry, make a sentry over a stalker or an adept or whatever. Because every time you have a sentry that's faster than later... Let's just say these sentries got made, what, one second ago? They've had one second to accumulate energy. But if you made sentries three minutes ago, for the next three minutes, you're going to accumulate energy until this fight happens. So you'll have, like, max energy on these sentries, and you'll have way more fucking spells you can cast. Way more zoning with force fields. This is not how you execute a force field sentry attack at all. So, yeah, uh, you're going to crush this guy, Kripiora. But do you see what I mean, though? Like, I even called the build before. Like, it was. It, I didn't know what it was going to be. I guessed because there are multiple options, but this is something that can be threatening if he's going to be aggressive. Okay. And you could have such a better defense against this if you flank this and you force him to fucking force field himself into a donut. Luckily for you, though, this guy doesn't know what force fields are and he didn't even cast a single one and all of his sentries are dead in the front. He still hasn't cast. Okay, there we go. He stacked up three really tightly force fields right there. This guy is clearly not very good at doing this build. Okay, anyways. So I'll, I'll stop picking on Koopa Troopa now. Koopa Troopa, sorry dude. I know I'm being a dick to you. 
I'm, I'm being a dick. Pause. What should you do right now? Can it be? At this point in the game. You should do two things. Please take a fucking layer, first of all. Why are you still in Hatchery Tech at nine minutes? Take a layer. Holy God, take a layer. Secondly, what you should do... Oh, you have a layer. Just joking. Just joking. Sorry, I didn't see the layer there. I, my bad. It's my fault. My bad. I'm a dick. You have a layer. Good job. So, so the first thing you should do is what I was going to go with there, going to go for there, is you should take some tech, okay? Get your tech going. What are you going to go into after this? What are What is your plan if this doesn't win the game? And this is a really bad mindset if you go, well, I'm only going to make this until the game is over. Like, I'm never going to get off Ravager Baneling Zergling. You know? Like, you don't want to, you don't want to be stuck on Ravager Ling Bane until it's too late and you're like, well, fuck, I probably should have prepared something else. Whoops. So, you definitely need to start, like, again, like, Aspire would be, Aspire against what you just saw now, Mass Sentries and Robo Units, Aspire would fucking own with Mudos. That would be great. You don't have to do that, but it would be a great option in this particular game. Another option, again, like a Lurkerdin with a Hydrogen Lurkerdin combo. That would be a great idea, too. That's more mainstream, good versus everything, versatile type of comp. Uh, and then you could also start an Infestation Pit to get ready to go into a Hive. So you can keep your upgrades rolling and you can get Adrenal Glands and do whatever the fuck you want. You can go into a Greater Spire. You can do so many things in this game. Just don't stick to this the whole time. Secondly, behind getting tech is you should get more drones. You have two options right now. You have an option to all in him or you have an option to make drones. I would say you're better off making drones and taking another base. Like take a base, make drones. This is now a drone window. If you attack this guy right now and you make mass units, you might straight up just end the game. But if he defends his next position really well, you could thin out your, your like, he could, uh, you know, defend his base, essentially, with, like, shield batteries and new robo units or whatever, and then not die. There's a chance he might not die. Does Vibe skip leg day? Yeah. You like how small my leg is? <laughs> look. Look at my hand. Okay? My leg's not super small. See, I, those are, there you go, there's my, uh, there it is. That's my finger. <laughs> Hi, YouTube. <laughs> well, yeah, anyways. If you attack right now, you're putting yourself into an unnecessary all-in. You don't need to all-in right now. You don't. You don't. Why would you? Let's see what you do. You're chilling. You're waiting. You're taking your time. You're making mass links against now Colossus. I'm, I'm okay with the fact that you made them before, but I don't want you to make any more. You're making drones. Good shit. Now you're ma okay. Why? Why? What is the point of these roaches? Why? Why make roaches right now? What are these roaches going to accomplish? Are you thinking to yourself? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and lose this fight now. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these army this army right here into the fucking trash can, and then I'll make new ones so he can't counterattack me. Is that what your plan is? Because if that's your plan, you gotta fucking reassess your mindset on StarCraft because that's a terrible fucking plan. Why not attack into this and go? Oh, he's got Colossus and an army that I feel like I might not break. How about I just back up? And make sure he doesn't have a fucking fourth base. Because I just confirmed a second ago that this fourth right here does not exist. You don't have to throw your shit away. And what if you just made drones really fast? It's a drone window. You're so aggressive all the time. You always overdo aggression. And you just threw your whole army away. Oh god. 
That gear is now moving slower. That we talked about last time. And now you're getting you're you're literally remaking the same exact army you just made. You're just remaking a bunch of fucking Roach Ravager. And now you're making drones. And you have to realize something. You just threw your fucking army away. You just fucking threw your army away. And now you're going to drone. This is not a drone window. You actually might die right now. Now you're making roaches again. Okay, yeah, you should be for a second. Why are you making wings? Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop fucking going roach, -ling, bane, roach ravager baneling. I fucking hate this composition. Why? Okay. Let Raider and Serral and a laser and Lambo do this build, okay? Let them do this build. Stop copying this build. I can't even begin to tell you how many Zerg players copy this build. And it's fucking terrible for lower level Zergs to try to emulate it. And you want to know why? This build only works if you're really good at multitasking and you're really good at map awareness. You have to be always active with this army. You don't just sit there and wait to get attacked by a bunch of Colossus and think you're going to do all right. You're going to get fucking owned is what's going to happen. I'm about to watch you just get smashed into the fucking ground. <coughs> and you're, re you're just maxing out on lings and roaches. You just spent... So here's another thing I don't like. You just depleted your entire gas bank and you're going Spire. Spire is a great choice. A Spire would have been a great, a great fucking choice. Like a super cool choice in this game. Well, you just threw away your entire gas bank to make Roach Baneling Ravager. Again, because you just threw away your first one. And you saw how good that one went. That one went great. You're maxed out. More legs. You're maxed out on more legs. I feel like you haven't spread your creep at all, by the way, in the last fucking five minutes. That's something to work on in the, as well in the future. Here we go again with another attack. You got a link counter attack and a main army going in here. If you force. If you just force this fight to happen, you're going to get obliterated. This army is not great at full frontal engagements, like straight in the face. Caripio, let me tell you something. You have his army's attention right here. Great. <coughs> Before I forget. Thanks, dude. Yeah, you better not forget. Thank you for the third five. Appreciate you. You have his army's attention to the front of his base, right? Why not just back up and then counterattack? His army's not here. Kill the fourth and then back up. Why force the fight to happen now? You're going to throw your army away to counterattack the fourth, just like you would have done either way if you did or didn't back up your main army. You're charging into him right now. You're literally charging his ass. Back up. Stop fucking fighting him! Oh my god. Back up! Okay, now you're over here. Okay. I will say this. I'm a little bit more okay with you being a little bit more aggressive if this base doesn't exist and you're going to kill this base instead. Because you need to keep the army busy. I'm a little bit more okay with it, but I hope you don't lose your entire fucking army. Straight up. It's... Your army... Again, your army kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. It's... It, like, this army needs to be very multi-pronged and used efficiently really well throughout the entirety of the game. And you're being a, a little bit wasteful here, I would say. 
Your counterattack of Ligs is alright. But now he warped in Zealots and he has a shield battery and a choke point. Like, right now, you should be telling your Ligs, hold position. Tell all your Ligs to hold position right now. And you know, you know what would happen? If he doesn't counter micro you by moving the probes with a mineral walk somewhere else, about like 80% of his probes would die right now. You are so stacked on so many probes. But your Ligs are ignoring them because they're trying to fight the Zealots. Does losing this army hurt him much? If he gets the toss to two bases, he has a shit ton of resources and five bases. The, this is what happens. This is what hurts. If the Zerg player throws his army away and then doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to Protoss, he opens himself up to a counterattack. And if the counterattack does a lot of damage, you could throw the fucking game in the trash really fast. If the Protoss sits there and never attacks, then sure, he'll be fine. But like right now, if the Protoss decides, you know what? Time to counterattack. Could be scary. Also, you're going for a Mutalist transition when you... You don't have control of the game right now. Okay, pause. You don't have control of the game right now at all. You do not have control of the game. Why do you not have control of the game? Because you just threw away your whole fucking army again. This is... Like, you have, you have some Ravagers. You have eight Ravagers, and that's it. Eight Ravagers. And also, eight Ravagers at this point in the game are not great. It's just not that great. It's, you you kind of like, you kind of would like better stuff overall. You would kind of like better stuff. Now, uh, what's it called? You're going mutas when you don't have control of the game, which means that Mutas are going to be forced to defend your base, otherwise you'll base trade, and you don't have enough mutas to do a base trade, because 11 is not enough to like overpower cannons and batteries and like new weapons. To do a base trade with mutas, you need, seriously need like 35 to 40, like something like 30 plus. You don't have enough. So you're making mutas at the worst time ever. Because you're making mutas late as fuck, after you've thrown away two armies. And now he's counterattacking you. And if you try to defend this attack with mutas, they're going to be horrendously bad. This guy doesn't play my throw, man. Why is he standing there? There we go. So here's the counterattack we're kind of talking about, right? See, so like you ask, like, Vibe, is it, is it really that big of a deal when you throw your whole army away repeatedly? Because you have more bases than your opponent? Yes, it's a major deal because, again, what's happening exactly right now is you open yourself up to counterattacks. You open yourself up to being counterattacked and just fucking destroyed. Which definitely sucks. Okay, well, you killed his hatchery. I mean, uh, sorry, he killed your hatchery, and uh, you're, you're making an army. Creepy, right? I feel like your playstyle is just literally just fucking randomness. It's just, it's chaotic. It's just chaos. <coughs> I think, oh, Creepy, I think you need to, like, take a quiz. I think something that'll help you is a quiz. What counters what in StarCraft 2? The fact that you're making Swarm Host Zergling versus someone who's going Colossus Archon is like the worst fucking unit comp you could make. Colossus counters Swarm Host and Zergling really well. He does counter Colossus really well. But Swarm Host and Zergling both get countered by a Colossus. And he just had an army of Colossus. And then, on top of that, he also has Archons and Immortals. 
as well. He's very robo heavy. So you're also making roaches, lings, and swarm hosts again. You're kind of going right back into the ling bane ravager comp that you already keep going for every single. It's like your default. Stop making that your default. It's really fucking bad. And if you're not, let me say, let me say it like this. There's only one time when Ling Bane Ravager is really good, and it's when you're constantly killing probes. Have you been constantly killing probes this game? How many probes have you killed in total? 11. In 14 minutes of a game almost, you've killed 11 probes. You're not killing enough probes to make this justifiably good. The only way Ling Bane Ravager is good is if you're always killing probes as a priority, and you don't let the Protoss establish. Now, it doesn't matter that you're making whatever the fuck garbage you're making right now because the Protoss only has 90 fucking supply because he only has two bases. You killed, you, you like fucking owned his third a second ago. Or he has three bases realistically. But you were annoying as fuck. You ended up, what did you, like... You've, you sl you've slowed him down enough to make him starving, essentially, around this point in the game. So... You're not making a great army logically, but it's still probably going to work because your Protoss is kind of dead already. Because he's playing a worse game than you are. But if you really think about it, if the Protoss has Colossus, you should probably make something with... you have, And your options are Ling, Spawning Pool, Infestation Pit, Roach Warren, or Spire. You should probably make something with your Spire. You should also, for the love of God, scout your opponent's base. Scout. You have not fucking scouted one time. This entire game, you have no idea what tech switches are in this game. You don't know anything. You don't have to scout every single time a fight happens, but you haven't even scouted once. At least for the love of God, send at least like one zergling across the map just to see, or a changeling, just to see what his current composition looks like. You're so blind all the time. I feel like you play, you're playing StarCraft 2 like, like it's fucking throwing dice on the ground and you're like hoping it comes up sixes or something. It's just random, randomness for you. Well, there's so much more like stability to this game if you actually scout a little bit. And you're making Banes again. I hate it. I actually hate it. Next time you watch Cyril, ne next time you watch Cyril play Ling Bane Hydra Roach, or sorry, uh, not Hydra, sorry. Next time you watch Cyril play against Perdos, and he goes Ling Bane Roach Ravager, I want you to watch very closely. How many times does he attack the economy? I really want you to watch that, because there's so many fucking people that watch pros play StarCraft, and then they copy their composition, but they don't copy their playstyle. And then you're like, why is, why is, why am I losing? What's happening? How come this game is difficult? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing at the composition at all. Like you're doing the reverse of what you should be doing here. <coughs> also, I haven't seen you spread creep in about 10 minutes now. For the love of God, spread some creep. You gotta spread creep, dude. Like, yeah. Your mechanics suck dick. And you're blowing up Banelings on the rock. Oi. And do you see what's happening now? This is the first, this is the first time this is the first time you finally scouted what he's doing because you're attacking his base. And you're like, wait, what? Mass Phoenix? What the fuck? I didn't know he was doing that. Of course you didn't because you didn't fucking scout anything. You didn't scout his base for like two minutes or like a minute and a half. You gotta have a little bit more assertiveness to your scouting. And now what's a good option to do with Mass Phoenix? Number one, make a hydrogen. Number two, make Corruptor. Number three, add some spores if you have, if your creep spread's great. You have mass swarm host, add some spores to that shit. Number four, add spores with infester. 
There's a lot of options you have overall. He just runs away from the locust. Meanwhile, picks up like all of like all like a bunch of units with his phoenix. You're going corruptor, okay. I will say I agree with your corruptor upgrade. You're going for carapace, that's correct. You're making banelings again. Your composition is so weird right now. Get out of there. Yeah, good job. So to say, like, don't do not fight all the Phoenix over all the stalkers. <coughs> okay, now I'm actually okay with you making Lings now, because he's going mass stalkers again and immortals, and he doesn't really have a lot of archons. So Ling plus Locust is actually not bad. But I would say an even better thing you could do now would be. Well, okay. You could stay on the composition you're on for a little bit longer for, for now. But here's what I would tell you to do. I told you to do this last... I'm pretty sure I told you specifically to do this last time. Check for the gosh darn expansions. You are... Carepiora. I feel like you should change your ID in StarCraft 2 to Tunnel Vision. Because that's what you do a lot. Right now, you are tunnel visioned like crazy into this fight right here. And you're probably never going to scout anything. Ever again. Go check the expansions that he is not currently defending. And you can keep him busy here with your locust and your corruptor. You have a bunch of links. Pause really fast. Protoss has... No bases, no bases, no bases there. That's fine. He's got an open doorway you could abuse right now. You could run links into his natural and into his main base and totally be fucking annoying. He also has a wide open third. Nothing defending it. And he has a base in bottom middle that if you were going to go Corruptor, Swarm Host, Link Bane, <laughs> if you scouted that this existed and you made like like let's say like 10 banelings and like 30 zerglings and you ran into his base you could have the banelings either hit the middle line or the banelings could hit like the center of the cannons right there and get rid of most of the cannons like either way would work but you're not ever going to do anything multi-prong aggressive you're going to just literally tunnel vision this one spot over and over and over Now you're throwing away all of your lings while your locusts sit there. The locusts are just now engaging the fight on a pylon. And your lings are basically almost all dead by now. And now your locusts are able to fight for all of about two seconds. And then they expire. And now you're just kind of flying around his base, doing whatever you want to do, whatever. Uh, let's check your money. The base looks like shit. That 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 base is empty. It lo also looks like shit. You don't even ever fix your gases. You're so tunnel visioned on attacking your opponent, you're not even macroing. How many drones do you have right now? You have 60, 67 drones. That's, that's fucking bad. You have... You're broke. You're the one with more bases and you're fucking broke.
Papa Vibu landed the smackdown. I'm just trying to help him. I'm just trying to help him out. But I... I don't really want to sugarcoat gameplay like this. And be like, you're doing a really good job. It's really random and chaotic. And then it's keeping your opponent on his toes. Like, it, it's just kind of... Like, this is good. This is actually good. I'm so proud of you right now, watching this for a second. You zoned out his army with your Locust. And you're actually counterattacking a more vulnerable mineral line that is not being defended right now. If you did this shit more often, with this kind of a style, this is how you fucking win. This is actually going to win you the game right now. This is legit going to win you the game. Right here. Look how effective this is. Holy shit. You just killed all of his probes, and you just opened up this whole base. Do it again. Do it again. Locusts are ready. Send him, send him over his way and hit the bottom base again. Do not, or like go into his natural. Yeah, that's fucking good. I like that. Send your links into his natural right now. That was a good locust attack. Nice locust attack. Okay, now he's attacking you. This is the problem with locust and your army against Rodos is that uh, you have to wait for the cooldown. This bird, this bird just grouped up against Banelings. That was a nice little Baneling hit. How's your, uh, how's your economy looking really fast? That looks like fucking shit. That looks like shit. That looks still like pretty dog shit. That looks, uh, that's fine. You have no idle drones there, but, uh, except for three on that gas. And that base still looks pretty, uh, need, needed to be fixed a long time ago. What's drone count at now? 53. What are you producing? One drone and 22 links. Fix your economy. Spread your creep. Holy shit. Your economy management and your creep spread and your mechanics are uh, non-existent. You are making this game feel like the biggest all-in that it doesn't have to feel like. <coughs> nice attack. That was a good attack. I'll give it to you. That was a good attack. He surrounded his army, got lo got closer to the locust, spawned him on his face. That was a good attack. I liked it. But I don't like I don't like how I don't like how you put yourself in these like all-in positions all the time. I don't like that at all. Like there are options. Okay? There's options on how you can choose to play the game out. There's options. You can be like, do I want to take the aggressive option or do I want to take the defensive option? Every single time when you hit that fork in the road, I feel like you always say aggressive, 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 aggressive. And if you hit the if you hit that aggressive fork in the road way too many times and you just don't even have good upkeep on your base, this is how you fall apart and you this is basically how you throw games essentially. This is how you throw games. You were like one bad engagement from throwing this game in the trash. Because you're not giving yourself a good foundation to work with like, at all. So fix your macro fundamentals. For the love of God, fix your macro fundamentals. Spread creep. I don't know what it is with Zergs that don't like to spread creep. But it's so overpowered. Creep is like ridiculously overpowered. If you're good at spreading it. It is amazing. And you just don't... like Because what you did to yourself this game... You spread creep a little bit on the south side. And then all you... And you never spread it once on the top side. And all that happens when you do that to yourself is you go... Well, I hope this game never goes to the top side. Because if it does, I'm going to be fucking blind. And I'm also going to have no mobility. So, spreading creep is dramatically important. It changes the, the outcome of your, of your fights so hard in your favor so many times. And it also denies expansions as well. It's just an amazing mechanic that you need to work on. Like, your creep spread is not good. It looked good for about 
two minutes, and then it just dropped off the cliff. Like, you started spreading creep around three minutes, and you stopped at, like, five minutes, and then you just stopped all, all game. For the next 16 fucking minutes, you, like, never did it again. <coughs> I didn't like that. But overall... Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, honestly. Uh, Krippy, I think you need to work on your fundamentals of uh, understanding, like, a more solid composition. I think you need to work on your uh, fundamentals of understanding what a more like just go you should really just try to get good with uh, Ling into Roach no Banes Ling into Roach into Hydra into Lurker and the Roach part of the game you only make like literally fucking five or eight of them unless you're getting all in if you're getting all in, make more, make obviously enough to stay alive. Make a lot. But if you're not getting all in, then don't make any. And all, again, only make Ravager as well if you're getting all in. Stop being the guy that goes Baneling, Zergling, Roach, Ravager, all, like aggressions, when it's not even, you're not even getting all in by Perdos. The only time this entire game I would allow, or I would be on board with you making Ravagers was when he was sentry pushing you. That's the only time. And if you didn't make multiple waves of Ravagers and then run over to his base and throw them in Suicide Squad missions, you could have made so much more Spire stuff so much faster. You could have ended the game with Mutas straight up on when he was on three bases. You could have done so much better with so many so many things. But, yeah. Uh, you need to uh, have a, a better understanding of, like, composition because your current understanding of it is not existent it, it just it, you also need to scout dude you need to fucking scout you don't ever scout you like literally don't scout you have to fucking scout something scout like if you don't know what his composition is fucking scout his base or at the very least scout the front of his base with a zergling so you can see what he's making like unit wise you just sit there blind in your side of the map and you go well whenever we fight we'll figure it out then right but in StarCraft 2 it doesn't work like that where you're like you can make anything and it beats everything you have to, like, make an army that is somewhat decently suited to deal with what your opponent's going for. Like, if you're sitting there making mass Zerglings and mass uh, Banelings, and your opponent's going mass Archons and, like, Stalkers or something, like, heavy fucking Archons, you're going to have a really bad day. If you're sitting there making mass ground units, like Roaches and Banelings, and your opponent goes for, like, six Void Rays with speed... You're going to be like, oh, okay, this is fucking awkward. Like, you have to fucking have some idea of what's going on. You can't just be blind and then just, like, wait for, like, these big max out fights to happen and just be like, well, hopefully I made the right comp. You got to actually, like, put a little bit more effort into scouting. Anyways, thanks. For, could it be? I know I'm always hard on you, and I keep getting harder and harder on you as time goes on because uh, I see you making a lot of the same mistakes repeatedly. So I'm, I'm, really, getting, I'm really drilling it in whenever I yell at you for those. Uh, but yeah, thanks for doing another replay analysis, dude. I hope it helps. At the end of the day, appreciate you. I thank you, thank you very much for the fifty for doing this, uh, and I hope it helps you.